Lovely. Well, it's great to see you another full house. Um, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Our talk is on pressure versus moisture, a key to success. Um, we are Medicare Plus International, myself and my colleagues around that you can see in the, in the blue tops. Myself, I'm Wendy Cole. I'm a clinical nurse advisor for Medicare Plus. So I work across uh, the whole of South Central and Mid and South Wales. Um, I am an RGM by trade. I'm still on the register. Um, I've got 36 years experience and in nursing home and in acute and an acute trust. So probably most things that you see in the way of pressure and moisture, I've probably seen as well. So the objectives, objectives of our session then are to discuss the anatomy and physiology of the skin, to differentiate between pressure damage and moisture associated skin damage. And you'll hear us um, abbreviate that to MASD. And hopefully we'll be able to move forward and act to prevent skin damage. So our skin is made up of three layers. The very top layer is that layer that you can see, and it's called the epidermis. And it's very, very thin. It's about as thick as a thick human hair on your head, but it's made up of five tiny sub-layers. The very top one's called the stratum corneum, and you might hear me refer to that again through the slides. We don't have a blood supply to our top layer of skin, so we're continually shedding it. The middle layer is the thickest layer, that's called the dermis, and that layer gives our skin its strength, its elasticity. We've got collagen and elastin fibres there. We've got things like um, nerve endings, they help us to feel pain, pressure, touch. We've got sebaceous glands producing that nice natural oil, that sebum that keeps our skin nice and supple. Um, and we've got um, other appendages, so things like sweat glands in there. And the innermost layer is our fatty subcutaneous layer. That layer, sometimes we refer to it as the hypodermis. You might have heard of that. That fat keeps us nice and warm. It insulates, it shock absorbs. And if we need energy, we can draw from that fat to give us energy. And we have a nice blood supply to that, that layer as well. So if I was giving you a talk this afternoon just on pressure, which of those three layers do you think could be affected if somebody got a pressure ulcer? Yeah, all of them. And it can sometimes go deeper, can't it? Sometimes there's tendon and bone exposed. But with moisture damage, it's very superficial. So rarely does it go beneath that very top layer of skin, the epidermis. It only tends to go as far as the dermis if there's severe infection involved. So it's about as deep as a blister. If you can think of a blister, you know, the top comes off a blister, that's how deep moisture damage is. So what exactly is moisture associated skin damage? Well, it is exactly what it says it is. It is skin damage caused by moisture. It can be any form of moisture. So it could be custard on your chin if you leave it in that crevice there and no, nobody wipes it off for 12 hours, but hopefully we're not using our products for those things. Um, under this umbrella term, we've got four main categories and these are universally recognized and they happen to be the four most common. There are others that are worth a mention, so things like dribbling, mucus, but these are the four most common. And this afternoon, we're mostly gonna talk about incontinence associated dermatitis or IAD for short. So if anybody's got, um, looks after little people, nappy rash, nappy associated dermatitis is the same thing. The others, just to touch on them, Intertriginous dermatitis or intertrigo, has anybody ever heard of that? Does anybody know what that is? Lady at the front nodding. <laughs> yeah, where people get really sweaty. So under breasts, in the skin folds, the groin, maybe the crack at the bottom, the natal cleft there. Um, Peri-wound moisture associated dermatitis. I mean, it's completely normal for us to ooze, isn't it? If we cut ourselves with a knife, you expect to ooze, but if that ooze becomes excessive and it goes on the surrounding skin, we, we start to see what we call maceration. The skin becomes soggy and boggy and starts to break down and that can create a problem. And lastly, we've got peristomal moisture associated dermatitis. Do some of you see stomas sometimes, colostomies, ileostomies, urostomies? Whatever comes out of that hole, the stoma, we call it the effluent, whether it's wee or poo, it is going to be more alkaline than our skin. Our, our skin is in fact a little bit acidic. It's got a pH of between 4.5 and 5.75. So anything alkaline going on it is going to be irritating. So we're going to concentrate on IAD. So how do we recognize it? Well, it presents as widespread diffu diffuse blotchy erythema. Erythema in my skin, I've got white skin, will present as pink or red. It just means where there's an increased blood supply to an area, and it might be due to trauma. It's not always, though. I mean, if I blushed, that would be erythema. 
That can vary, though, depending on skin tone. I've got another slide about skin tone next, and we'll talk about that in a bit more depth. They might, your, your patient might present with maceration. Like I said, that's where the skin becomes really boggy and soggy and starts to break down. The closest I can liken that to for us is, you know, when you've worked a long shift and you're shattered, you get home, you have a nice long soak in the bath if you're still blessed to have a, a bath. And when you get out, your fingers and your toes go a bit crinkly if you've fallen asleep in there. That's maceration. If you were laying there for a week, you'd be pretty unrecognisable. Your skin would be so um, macerated. There'll be patches of denudement. I know it's difficult for you to see from there, but we've got bare areas there, denudement, or partial thickness erosion. Um, like I said, rarely does it go beneath that very top layer of skin. But damage might be in a line, in a cleft or a skin fold. So think of the crack at the bottom, the natal cleft. Sometimes we can see that it's shiny, it's pink, and it's starting to split. There may be leakage of serous exudate. That's that straw colour fluid we see, you know, if a blister popped. We don't always see blood, do we? Quite often it's that straw colour fluid, or we might see bleeding. This can ha happen over a bony prominence. Predominantly, it's the sacrum. Equally, you can see it over fleshy areas. For years, I worked in trauma and orthopaedics. We used to have people come in and got up in the night to use the toilet. They've fallen over. They've fractured their neck of femur. They're incontinent. They've been lying there for 48 hours before somebody's found them lying on the floor. And they come in, and you've got it quite extensively down the buttocks and down the back of the legs, right down to the back of the knees there, and it's all in the skin folds. Um, you might see it as a line, though, or as perianal irritation. This feels very itchy for our patient. Um, so you might notice that they're trying to get into their pad all the time to have a good old scratch, or maybe you're seeing scratch marks or nail marks on their buttocks when, you, when you, know, you go to wash them in the morning. Skin tone, 80% of people on this planet have a dark skin tone, whether it's olive up to very, very dark skin, very black skin. And it might be difficult to see a colour change. Like I said, my skin will go pink or red. You know, if I cross my legs and, and sat there for a while and uncross them, it'd be pink or red. If you've got a dark skin tone, it may be more of a bluey purple tinge. If you've got very black skin, it might be very difficult to see a discoloration at all. And this is why sometimes moisture damage can get missed. You know, it's not picked up if you're just going by colour. So use your other senses. If somebody's got very dark skin, does that area on their bottom feel warm to the touch compared with the surrounding skin? Does it just feel a bit different? Does it feel a bit spongier or does it feel firmer? Is our patient saying, my bottom feels sore? That's a pretty good indication, isn't it? There's something going on. So let's listen to our patient. Does it feel itchy to them? Are they saying, I feel very itchy? It's very painful. I mean, if you can think in your minds of people that you've looked after with IAD, you know, sometimes they'll, they'll say it feels like it's burning. Or, you know, if you've got a baby at home that's got nappy rash, you know, I've got a granddaughter who's had nappy rash, and it is really, really sore from them. It makes them quite miserable. The reason for that is where our, our top layer of skin, that epidermis meets the dermis, the next layer, that's where all our nerve endings are. So if we erode that top layer of skin, all those nerve endings are exposed. So anything touching them, even air, can be really sore. I liken it to a burn. And when you think about it, it's a chemical burn, isn't it, from the wee and the poo on the skin. And like a burn, if anybody here has looked after somebody with a, a deep, you know, a full thickness burn or maybe a, a, a deep leg ulcer, Quite often, those people don't feel it as much as you burning yourself on the cooker when you're cooking that pizza for your tea. You know, that superficial graze, it, it hurts for a week, doesn't it? It hurts like hell. Um, and, 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 you know, that's because that's where those nerve endings are, right at the top. So how do we categorise moisture damage then? Well, the simplest way is to categorise it as mild, moderate or severe. Um, this is nothing to do with our categories of pressure. Those still stand. This is just moisture damage that we're talking about. And very handily, I don't talk about our products too much on this session, but we have this, what we call a skin damage meter on each of our products. So as soon as you pick up a product and you look at it, it will tell you exactly the severity of moisture damage you should be putting that, that on. I can probably guarantee that half the room have never seen that before. And the reason for that is because you're busy people and you don't stand there looking at packaging. But next time you go back to your workplace, if you do use our products, have a little look and just make sure you put in the correct product on the correct damage. So mild skin damage, we would describe that as that erythema, so either a colour change or a change in the feel of the skin. Um, the skin will be dry and intact. It can be a bit scuffy, but it's not broken, but it is at risk of further breakdown. I'm sure we'd want to put something on this bottom here, wouldn't we? If you saw a bottom like that, you'd want to put something on it to try and prevent it from getting any worse. 
moderate skin damage, we've got moderate erythema with less than 50% damaged skin. So what that means is, of the area that's affected, the reddened area, less than half is broken, which is the case. We've just got a few little breaks on that lower cheek there. And there might be a little bit of oozing. It might be that serous fluid or it might be a little bit of blood. When you take the pad off, there might be a bit of oozing on there. But with severe skin damage, we've got a larger area of erythema. That's really hard to say. A larger area of erythema with more than 50% damaged skin. So of that area that's affected, more than half is broken. And it will be wet. You know, if you took a top off a blister, it's wet underneath, isn't it, where, where the, um, there's no epidermis. And you might see that serous fluid again or bleeding. As a company, we promote this stepping up and stepping down approach to products. It's not ethical for us as a company, and certainly not for me on the NMC register, to be trying to plug the dearest products. That's not what we're about, and certainly not what I'm about. It's about selecting the correct product for the severity of moisture damage that our patient has at that time. So I know it's difficult to see it on here. If you do want any more um, information about the products, please come over to our stand, but I will talk through it here. If our patient presents with mild skin damage, we start them off on the left with a Mediderma S Total Barrier Cream. And what we suggest is use it for two to three days. If there's no improvement or the skin gets worse, then step up to the middle to the Mediderma S Total Barrier Film. Again, use it for two to three days. If you don't see any improvement or the skin gets worse, we step up to the Mediderma Pro. So we've got a foam and spray incontinence cleanser and we've got an ointment. Have you ever seen Ant and Deck on the telly? Do you know what I'm talking about? Think of them like Ant and Deck. You will never see one without the other, okay? We should always use them together, get them prescribed together. We don't put them in the same box because it's a bit like your shampoo and conditioner. You're always gonna run out of one before the other, but they should be used together. I'd actually give that a week up to two weeks. Anecdotally, that's what people say is a time frame by, by which they tend to see an improvement. Sometimes within 48 hours, you might see an improvement. And if you do, if the skin goes from severe down to moderate, step down to your film. And then when you've just got a you know, sort of dry um, uh, discoloured patch, then just step down to your cream again. But fortunately, we've got everything within the range there in order to do that. And it might be that you've got to go up and down a couple of times. What we don't want to see is... Um, repeat prescriptions of products, you know, without um, anybody um, sort of reassessing. Um, you know, because there is a cost implication and it might not be the correct product for that patient. We call it the total barrier protection strategy because we've got everything there within the range, like I said. The only people that might stay on Mediderma Pro forever is end of life because like anything, the skin's an organ and it can shut down right the rest of our body. So they may not, those patients may not have that skin integrity there. So IAD and pressure, I suppose it's quite obvious really, they're two different conditions because they're caused by two different things. But one can lead to the other. We're far more likely to get a pressure ulcer on our bottom if we're incontinent because the skin's soggy and it's vulnerable. And the two conditions can coexist in an individual. So it might be that you've got somebody with a sacral pressure ulcer, but also they've got that moisture damage in the same area. And there's still quite a bit of confusion between superficial pressure ulcers so you kind of category one and two is going into a category three and moisture. Because like a red scuffy bottom can look very much like a red scuffy bottom, can't it? I think years ago, um, like I know myself and the lady at the front, we trained in the 80s with Florence Nightingale. You know, we just thought everything was pressure, anything that was red. You know, we didn't really think that much about moisture. Um, why is it important then that we can differentiate between the two? Well, it is important because we treat them very differently. So with pressure, we might stick a dressing on a pressure ulcer. So we do our offloading and we might stick a dressing on. But with moisture damage, we don't use dressings. We use our barrier protection products. So if we stick a dressing on moisture damage when we didn't need it, it's going to be costly. We didn't need that dressing. We didn't need the nurse's time to do that dressing. Costly for our patient because we might have just made their condition worse for them. If they're in hospital, that might delay them from going home. And very sadly, it's a reality though, we do live in a where there's a blame, there's a claim culture, don't we? So we, you know, we can get into a lot of trouble if we, if we get it wrong. And the actual number of pressure ulcers reported may be inflated. That al might alter the way we perceive standards of care where you work. I've done that one already, haven't I? So skin damage, which is as a result or because of, of moisture, should not be recorded as a pressure ulcer, but should be referred to as MASD to distinguish it. And it should be recorded separately or reported separately. 
that's not us as a company or your trust saying that. That came from NHS Improvement back in June of 2018. So as well as pressure, it's not law, but it is a recommendation that we should be reporting cases of moisture damage as well. Is that something that you do in your areas? Do you report on your moisture? Yep, I've seen a lot of nods. If you see necrotic tissue, that just means dead tissue with an IAD, it's extremely unlikely to be due to the IAD. It's not impossible, but it is very rare. It usually means you've got a combination of both. You've got both pressure and moisture in the same area. And if that is the case, the NHS improvement recommendation is that we just report on the case of pressure. You don't have to report on both. So let's take a look at the differences between pressure and moisture. So pressure ulcers, it's telling us we find those over a bony prominence. So you probably have to do this by the medium of mind. But if you were checking somebody's pressure, pressure areas, what parts of the body would you be looking at? Yeah, shoulders, heels, elbows, yeah. Back of the head, yeah, quite unusual, but we do sometimes see them there. Yeah, legs, hips, knees, sometimes people like a pillow between their bony knees, don't they, or their ankles. Ears, ears are a nightmare, aren't they? We lie people on hearing aids, or sometimes their glasses are on a bit too tight. Sometimes we put oxygen on people a little bit too tightly, so we've done that to them, or the medical device has. What's different about the skin in those areas? If you think about the skin on your elbow as opposed to the skin on your buttock, it's much thinner, yeah. There's not a lot, is there, between the bone and those blood vessels within my skin to protect them. It's rock hard there. I can feel that bone right underneath. But with my buttock, I've got a nice thick layer of pad in there of fat, which protects those blood vessels from that bone underneath. IAD, yep, yeah, we might see over that bony area, but predominantly it's gonna, um, well, equally, it can be over those fleshy areas. Shape, pressure ulcers have a, a sort of regular circular shape to them. They tend to have um, sort of distinct edges and they're limited to one spot. Whereas moisture is more superficial, it's got a regular shapes and edges to those breaks in the skin. They're not circular, they're all jagged. Uh, but you might see a line in a cleft or a skin fold. Colour, pressure ulcers can be very colourful. They can be red, yellow, green, purple, black. Hopefully you don't get to see too many like that. But moisture, like I said, in white skin like mine, it tends to be red or pink. In dark skin tones, it could be more of a bluey purple tinge. It might be difficult to see that colour change at all, but you might see white maceration. And then depth, as if you remember back to our layers of the skin diagram right at the beginning, we said that pressure could be full thickness right down to tendon and bone, but moisture damage is much more superficial. Rarely does it go beneath that top layer. And then necrosis. IAD, as I said, extremely rare to see necrosis in IAD, but we may well see it in pressure. So slough is that softer, tackier dead tissue, tends to be white, cream or yellow. Eschar is almost like the next level. It's like an old lump of leather, tends to be dark in appearance, uh, quite leathery. Tissue viability nurses sometimes go on a course to remove that. or Unfortunately, some patients have to go to theatre to have that excised. So... Let's see what you know, what you've just learned from me. So in front of you, you should have a paddle or in your hand, you've got a little paddle. This is a little bit like uh, Dale Winton and his red tomatoes and green peppers. But we've got pressure and moisture. So I need you to try and identify whether you're looking at pressure or moisture. Don't need to know categories or anything. Just simply, is this pressure or moisture? What do we think about the first one? We've got a lady, there's a, three moistures, the rest are pressure. And everybody on this side is saying pressure. Yeah, it is in fact pressure. So majority of you got that one right, well done. What do we think about that one? Wow, a lot of commitment there. 100% moisture, fantastic, well done. You can see they're a bit jaggedy, aren't they, those breaks? They're not, they're not uniform. What do we think about that one? 100% correct again, well done, that is moisture. And you can, difficult to see on the screen, but it is a little bit patchy, isn't it? It's not uniform, it's that kind of blotchiness there. What do we think of that one? I think that's going to be unanimous as well. Let's have a look. Yeah, fantastic. It's sometimes hard to think, isn't it? That's a patient. We look at these pictures, don't we? But think, you know, outside the box, how does this affect somebody's activities of daily living? Probably in a lot of ways. Would they go down the pub with this? Would they go shopping with this? Would they be intimate with somebody with this? No. So, yeah, just sort of, Remembering that, what about this? Oh, we've got a mixture going on there. This side of pretty much about 99% correct. Yeah, it's actually moisture damage that we're looking at there. It's on that buttock there. And 
that's it. Are there any questions at all? Thank you for those clapping at the back. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, any questions at all about anything that I've covered? Well, because you've done so well, you get to go to our stand to collect a goodie bag. So even if you've been to our stand, you get a special one for attending. So Alpner and Danny at the back in their blue tops, they've got these little um, pieces of paper for you to take to our stand, which is right in the corner behind the Flaminor one. If you'd like to go there and collect a goodie bag. And it's been lovely to see you. Enjoy the rest of the conference.